Hey, what is up? In this video, I'm gonna cover how to download MetaHuman clothing from the marketplace and get that set up inside of your project, configured on your MetaHuman so that you can use them for whatever MetaHuman project you're doing for games, cinematics, uh, visualization, etc. There's a lot to go over with MetaHuman, so let's jump right into this tutorial. So the first step is to go to the Unreal Engine website and head to the marketplace. The easiest way to find MetaHuman clothes is to search MetaHuman. There are not many, and I've only started creating my own very recently. And this is my very first uh, asset pack. Pretty proud of this one. And something you want to look for immediately and should be written is what skeleton type this clothing asset is made for. In this case, it's male tall normal and female tall normal. This also says that it doesn't come with boots. Uh, there should usually be like a layout photo like this that shows what assets are going to be coming. And in this case, uh, you'll see some of the materials and the assets and also these two skeletons, which are really important. So next we're going to create our metahuman and there's a couple really important nuances that I want to cover here. So first is body proportions, and in the marketplace, it did note that we are only making clothes for male tall normal and female tall normal. To get to that body type or skeleton type, you're going to want to select the tall type at the top on the left here. And you'll see that there are three weight categories. These assets are only made for the very top one. This is male tall normal, and on the left, this is female tall normal. So definitely double check with your MetaHuman asset which skeleton type it's designed for. Next, we're going to choose uh, top here. And even though we're not going to use this, it's very important. When you generate a MetaHuman, uh, the majority of the body under the clothing is deleted. So for a long sleeve shirt, this person really wouldn't have arms. So in our case, we're going to be using a t-shirt because our outfit has uh, also a t-shirt. So we're going to want to actually have the MetaHuman arms. Same thing here, uh, if your outfit that you're going to be using has shorts, you're going to want to generate it with shorts. In our case, we're going to put legs um, under pants so we can use pants. And specifically for that construction set, you're going to need to generate your own boots. These ones work really well and you can kind of rough in the color you want here, but I'll show you how to change this color later in Unreal Engine should you change your mind. Finally is the hair groom here. And this is pretty obvious, but if you're going to try to use the helmet, you know, it makes sense to choose a relatively short haircut. This one is really, really safe or just bald. If you use a groom like this that's tall or the really big afro, there's a really decent chance that the hat that's coming with the outfit will not fit so well. If you're using a feminine character and you want to use a hat, this is also a really safe one here, the low ponytail. I use this one quite a bit when testing with hats. And so yeah, that's your MetaHuman creator tips. So next we're going to start a new Unreal Engine project. If you already know how to do this, that's fine. There is something really important at the end though, so definitely follow along here. We're going to go into Bridge and we're going to download our MetaHuman. You need to be logged in over here and you're going to go to My MetaHuman to the MetaHuman section. We're going to click on our MetaHuman and we're going to download them, which if this is your first time, it's going to generate and this can take quite a while. With it downloaded, we're going to go to our local section, MetaHumans, click on the MetaHuman and do Add. This is going to import uh, all of the assets that we need and it's also going to flag if it's a new project a bunch of plugins that you need to enable It's not a big deal. Just wait for this to finish Don't do anything while this is happening and just enable all the plugins and then you're just going to restart the project Now that we're back into our project here We're going to have all this metahuman stuff and you're going to want to open the metahuman blueprint that comes with the project it will take a while to compile all of the shaders, not a big deal. But what we want to get set up right now uh, to start is the LOD component. So we're going to just set this to zero for now, which is going to essentially set the entire body and groom to high quality. Next, we're going to want to actually get our MetaHuman assets imported. We'll go back to the website, launch the launcher and do add to project. You just need to select the project that you just made or wherever you want to put your new MetaHuman clothing. 
Now we're back in the project and uh, the clothing from this set are in these folders here. That's an overview map and a master texture. And the important part here is that the metahuman clothing is going to come with its own metahuman skeleton. And if you try to put these clothes on the other metahuman blueprint, it actually won't find them. It won't work. So what we want to do is open up the metahuman skeleton that comes with the asset and you're going to want to go to asset details that's also found in the window here in case that's off. And really simple, all we need to do is add a compatible skeleton and we're going to add the metahuman base skeleton. So that's what all the uh, generated metahumans are going to be using. And we're going to do the same thing for the female skeleton in the case of this asset pack. And we're just telling Unreal Engine that when we're using the stock metahuman skeleton from the app, that these clothes and this skeleton are compatible and they are exactly the same in this case. So now we're back in our metahuman blueprint. We've made the skeletons compatible and I'm just gonna go over some basics of switching out the clothing. We've selected the leg skeletal mesh component or leg slot. And now we're just gonna go select the uh, metahuman custom clothing that we want to use and we're switching that out uh, This may look funny because this is still using the slacks material We just reset it with the little arrow and now we're using the default assigned material for the jeans in this case and In a lot of cases uh, these are going to come with alternate colors or alternate materials and You can just switch that out here and if you did the naming correctly <laughs> for the marketplace uh, it's easy to switch them out like that as well, just clicking on the name. So that is how we're switching out the pants. Uh, next, we're going to do the exact same thing for the torso. This is a bit repetitive, but trust me, there's something coming up next that not everyone uh, may know how to do. But uh, we're going to just switch out this to the t-shirt again. has the wrong texture on it, material. We're going to switch it out to the default, so we're all set here. So just to reinforce that, you know, there's something funny going on here, right? There's no body under there, which is kind of odd. But that's what happens with the MetaHuman Creator app is that if you put on a t-shirt or a long shirt, it's going to delete out a lot of the body that you may not need. But what we'll see here is that this t-shirt isn't made to be used on its own. It's meant to be used with a vest over it, but we don't have any more quote unquote slots for that. So we're going to duplicate the torso and we're going to name it vest. You can name it whatever you want. And that is just another place to add more clothing. And at the moment we have two t-shirts, but we're going to switch this out to the vest. So depending on the clothing from the marketplace, you might need to add some slots. Um, in some cases, you may not need to have all of them used. It's really going to depend on the marketplace creator. And for this vest, it does have some uh, alternate material instances there to have some different colors pretty easily. Now that we've added an additional skeletal mesh component for the vest here, it actually will not move with the rest of the body unless you go to the construction script, which is at the top usually, and it's on the left as well. And we're going to just simply copy and paste this first node here. You don't have to know what this means, but you have to do it. We're going to alt click to get rid of the line, reconnect them, and we're going to drag the vest right on top of this here. And so for every new skeletal mesh component you add or clothing slot, you need to make sure that it's represented in the construction script. That's it. You don't have to understand blueprints, but you do have to do that step. Next up, if you want to use a helmet, there are different ways of bringing helmets in. This one is a static mesh, so it doesn't have a skeleton. So the process is a little bit different. We're going to click on body and we're going to add a static mesh, not a skeletal mesh right here. It's been pre-selected and there is our helmet. However, we are not done. If we tried to move around, that helmet would not stay with the head. So we have to do just one or two things here to get this set up properly for static meshes. So I've just renamed the static mesh component helmet. Just for clarity, you could name it whatever you want. And we are going to set the parent socket to head. So now the hat's going to move with the head. However, the head bones in, well, where the head bone should be. And we're going to need to just rotate this back 90 on Y, it looks like. And just by eye, really, um, put the helmet where you think it should go, how it looks right. If you have a bigger haircut or a different type of helmet, it could be like a scarf. It could be, I mean, scarf should be rigged, but it could be all sorts of things that need to get basically rigidly attached to uh, one of the bones. This is how you're going to do it. And most commonly is going to be the hat. 
So really just move it around until it looks right. And you could even scale it over here, usually just small amounts of difference. Um, all the metahuman heads are different, so it's kind of impossible to get one hat that fits everyone perfectly, but it is easy enough to tweak it just a bit there. For our last step here, I'm going to show you how to customize the material of a stock metahuman asset. Like if you're using, say, their pants or their shirt, or in this case, the boots that come from the app itself. You can simply open up the material instance, like I've shown here, and right here, diffuse color one and two. And there's actually a couple more things. There's a lot going on here. But the big thing that you want to change and play with is going to be diffuse one and two. And just like in the creator app, you can change the color of the boots really simply here. So if you want to make them look like typical construction boots, which are kind of like a desaturated yellow or more like uh, combat boots that are black, all of that can happen right here. And the metahuman boots are really flexible and I use them for like the majority of my projects. Even when I'm making custom skins, I think the boots are really, really good. So that wraps it up for this tutorial on using MetaHuman clothing from the marketplace. It is still early days uh, with MetaHuman clothes other than the stock ones and the very few that are on the marketplace. But lately I've been putting a lot of my time into making clothing for MetaHumans that I use in Cinetracer. And now uh, I'm now able to put them on the marketplace and just wanted to have a place that I could point people to on how to get them up and running for your projects. You can see here in Control Rig that the clothing is behaving properly and it would with animations and anything using MetaHumans. I will see you on the next video. Peace.